wanted to work through a example of the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. The Bohr model of the hydrogen atom is a model that incorporates both particle properties of electrons and wave properties of electrons. Uh, it also incorporates the wave and the particle properties of light, photons. Anyway, in this example, in this problem, we're told that hydrogen emits a visible light with a wavelength of 656 nanometers. So this is a red colored light. And uh, we're asked to figure out what transition in the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom does this particular wavelength of light originate from? So let's just start with our Bohr model, our wave particle model of the hydrogen atom. Uh, in the Bohr wave particle model of the hydrogen atom, only certain orbits of the electron around the nucleus are permissible. Uh, those orbits correspond to certain radii. They correspond to certain velocities. They correspond to, most importantly here, certain energies, certain binding energies. And that's what I'm picturing over on the left-hand side here. The allowed binding energies of the electron in the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. So based on the Bohr model, the equation for the binding energy of a, an electron in a allowed orbit in the hydrogen atom is that the binding energy equals negative 3.6 electron volts divided by the square of the principal quantum number. So here's the equation for the binding energy. And um, let's annotate this sketch of the allowed orbitals in the hydrogen atom. Let's annotate it with the principal quantum number. That's our label that denotes each orbital and the corresponding binding energy, E subscript N, for that particular orbit. So the most bound state has a principal quantum number one, it's the ground state, and its energy based on this equation is minus 13.6 EV, that's the binding energy. The next most bound state, its principal quantum number is two, um, that has an energy that's minus 13.6 EV divided by two squared, that comes out to be minus 3.40 EV. The next most bound state, so that's the second excited state, has a principal quantum number three, and uh, its energy is minus 13.6 EV divided by n squared. Uh, n is three, so this is divided by nine. That comes out to be minus 1.5. 1 EV. And then finally, on my sketch here, this fourth orbital, that's the third excited state, principal quantum number four, and its binding energy is minus 13.6 electron volts divided by four squared, or 16. That comes out to be minus 0.85 electron volts. So that's just a, a picture of our hydrogen atom. And uh, our job here, as the question says, is to figure out which transition corresponds to this red light with wavelength 656 nanometers. So the way I'm gonna go ahead and solve this is actually for find out the corresponding energy of the photons for a wavelength 656 nanometers. Then once I know the energy of the photons, I can see if I can find a match between the energy difference between a higher lying state and a lower lying state that would produce that energy of photon corresponding to that wavelength of light. 
So it's really a bit of trial and error here to find out which pair of transitions, which combination of initial and final states would produce this energy of photon that has this wavelength of light. Anyway, as starting point has to be to figure out the energy of the photon that corresponds to a wavelength of light 656 nanometers. So the energy of the photon is related to the frequency by E equals Planck's constant times the frequency. That's Planck's equation. And then the frequency is related to the wavelength by the equation that the product of the frequency and the wavelength is the speed of the wave. And so replacing frequency in terms of wavelength, I get this little equation here. Planck's constant times speed of light divided by the wavelength of our particular radiation. So all I've got to do now is fill in the various constants here. I'm going to fill in Planck's constant. It's easiest to fill it here in terms of um, electron units of electron volt seconds rather than joule seconds. So that's um, 4.1 times 10 to the minus 15 EV seconds. We've got to multiply this by the speed of light as three times 10 to the eight meters per second. And then finally, we've got to divide that by the wavelength of our light as 6.56 times 10 to the minus seven meters. And I carried out this calculation and I got a corresponding photon energy that's 1.89 EV. And so this energy here is the energy difference between some higher lying state and some lower lying state with some initial principal quantum number, we call it NI, some final quantum number, uh, we call it NF. And uh, we've just got to identify those quantum numbers. And so I'm looking at a match for 1.89 electron volts. Well, first I maybe looked for transitions going down to the ground state, but there, there can be no match to this photon energy for transitions going down to the ground state because every transition is gonna be equivalent to a photon energy that's greater than 1.89 EV. So it's, it's not a transition to the ground state. So let's start climbing the ladder. Could it be a transition to the first excited state? So let's imagine say that the second excited state decays to the first excited state. Let's think about that possibility. Well, if I think about that possibility, I'm starting with a binding energy of minus 1.51 electron volts. I'm transitioning to a state with a binding, binding energy of minus 3.40 electron volts, that exactly corresponds to that energy difference in our problem. And so we've identified that this transition that releases 1.8 electron volts has a initial state Ni, a final state Nf that are three and two correspondingly. Anyway, this example of using the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom that's built into it is the wave particle duality of matter and also the wave particle duality of light. And um, using that, we've been able to solve for, find out the initial and final states of a particular wavelength of light.